Hello, everyone. I'm Professor Tim Spector of the Zoe Health Study. And this week, I'm going to be looking more in depth at the differences between the symptoms of the Omicron variants BA1 and BA2, and hopefully come up with an answer about which one is worse, although you may know from personal experience. Um, and I'll also be talking to you about how we're updating our app to allow you to report symptoms on all of your health conditions, not just COVID, as part of our mission to research and understand all major diseases beyond COVID. But first, let's uh, get down to this week's data, which shows that case rates are finally stopping their free fall drop and really starting to level off. And with some signs that are about to increase again. So let's, let's dive in and look more carefully. So as I said, cases are still decreasing, but this rate is down to a snail's pace. And we're down to 116,000 cases a day, which is only about an 8% decrease from last week. Um, and this, uh, is, this rate of decrease slowing down is as we've been predicting for the last couple of weeks. Now, this R number we're going to start creeping, is seeing creeping back to one. And uh, this will then, we expect going to plateau or even bend back up. And we currently have one in 35 people currently having COVID, and it's not going to get very much better than that uh, over the next few weeks, unfortunately. Some good news, however, is that deaths and hospitalizations are continuing to decline steadily. Now, uh, age groups, not much to say here. We're seeing case numbers leveling off in all of the age groups. Um, with a suggestion of it even tipping up slightly in kids, although it's a bit too early to be sure. Now, regions, uh, these have been very similar the last few weeks, nothing really to report here, but there are now signs that Northern Ireland and Scotland are seeing signs of an uptick in cases. And it looks like all the other UK regions are starting to see uh, rates of decline slowing down and we'll probably all blend into the same pattern. Now, looking at other countries, spare a thought for the poor old Chinese with their zero uh, COVID policy. Uh, there are reports of forcible quarantine, uh, as Shang in particularly in Shanghai, is now in its seventh week. Imagine that seventh week of pretty much complete lockdowns, everything shut, restrictions to food and hospitals. And Although government in China is not calling it lockdown, uh, places, particularly Beijing, are, are essentially having that and people having to, every, millions working from home. Uh, on the other side of the world, South Africa's daily uh, virus testing has, uh, the numbers of positive has reached record levels in the last week, going above 30% of uh, tests for the first time. And this uh, is picked up because of two sub variants of Omicron, which seem to be spreading rapidly. This is the BA4 and the BA5. And they seem to be able to reinfect those that have already had the original Omicron BA1. Now, as I mentioned uh, a couple of weeks ago, we have seen these at very low levels and um, really tiny amounts compared to what we have in the, in the UK is this XE strain, which is a mix of BA1 and BA2. Uh, but we're still waiting for some more data. It's been a bit slow from the government uh, on this. But what you need to know is that pure BA2 is now accounting for 94% of cases in England. And that's what you're uh, likely to be getting or people around you uh, if you drop in with it. So the question that uh, I get asked all the time and haven't been able to answer now is how do the different uh, subvariants Omicron vary in their symptoms? And for the first time, we're able to look at this. But before we do, let's just remind yourselves of the current top 20 symptoms, starting with uh, runny nose at the top at 83%, all the way down to uh, loss of appetite and skipping meals uh, at number 20. And we're going to bring you some uh, breaking analysis. It's a bit crude, and 
uh, there are lots of caveats about it because it's hard to directly compare BA1 infections with BA2 without um, the ability to match for everything because, of course, it happened at different times of the year, different rates of immunization, et cetera. But what seems to be clear um, from what we, we're seeing is that um, the BA2 symptoms seem to be less severe than BA1. And this is reflected in lower hospitalization rates. So less severe disease really in the last three months of Omicron compared to the first three months. And we're doing this, we're matching uh, groups of people who got it in the first three months and the second three months, but only using people who had their the three vaccines between three and five months previously. So we're doing as much as we can. And when we do that, uh, as well as this reduced severity, we see a slightly different picture. And if you look at the graph here, you can see that uh, everything on the right of the graph is commoner in BA2, and everything on the left of the front line on that straight line down the middle is uh, rarer and commoner in the original BA1. So obviously respiratory symptoms, the runny nose, delirium in old people, um, and loss of smell and sneezing, et cetera, all commoner. But generally what we're seeing is that people have more symptoms, uh, even if they're mild, and we're seeing greater numbers um, with more than five symptoms. And going down the end of the list, uh, we can see there's actually uh, less headache, less abdominal pain, particularly uh, with uh, BA2 compared to BA1. But the, the overall picture really is this increased hospitalized, uh, reduced hospitalization by about half and uh, people, about 50% more people having more than five symptoms. So uh, although we need to really check on this and be nice to get some other data, early signs are if you get it, you're getting a full package of symptoms, less likely to go to hospital. What we don't know is whether you might be slightly more likely to get long COVID. Uh, but uh, it's less serious, which is good news. So that's BA1 and BA2, and that's all thanks to your diligent reporting. And we couldn't have got that without you taking the time every day to do that. So thanks very much. And I want to tell you also about how the app is changing. Uh, a, a new daily flow is coming to the app and to help us look beyond COVID. And we, what we want you to do is to log all new symptoms you experience, not just what you think are COVID related. And this means we got anything from new back pain to blurry vision. And a lot of us get uh, different symptoms every day, particularly as you get older with chronic illnesses. And what we're gonna do is try and make it really easy to log any new symptoms. And to do that, what we want to do is to work out what your usual self is. And we're gonna set, we want you to set up your normal self. So if your normal self, for example, always has a bit of knee pain from arthritis, you don't have to log that every day. We'll just um, assume that's part of your normal uh, aches and pains of uh, getting on a bit uh, as, as we all experience. And we're still committed to tracking your symptoms and spread of COVID as we showed with this Omicron data. So do give us all those uh, respiratory ones as well, your tests and vaccines. And we're slowly rolling this out over the next few weeks and um, some will get it this week others will get it in following. So don't worry if you haven't seen it yet. Menopause uh, diet survey. Some good news is that nearly 80,000 of you uh, who've been invited have now completed both the diet and the menopause survey. And uh, we do want many more of you to fill it in. There are some others uh, st we're still waiting for. And if you're a woman between the ages of 45 and 60 have consented to the health study, and you've shared your information on the health profile questionnaire, you should by now have an received an invite. So if you haven't, maybe check your junk mail uh, where it might be sitting. And we are probably going to be widening this out to broader, wider groups, and we'll update you when we do that so everyone gets a chance to fill it in. And 
it's obviously important for us to learn more about the menopause and how symptoms may be affected by diet, not only because it's so under-researched, but um, and affecting 50% of uh, people and slightly more of that on, on the app, but also because uh, a lot of you are going through trouble getting hold of your HRT in the UK, and um, we're looking at really other ways we can, we can help people. So in conclusion, um, we're really excited to be launching this brand new feature in the Zoe Health app, which will make reporting uh, all of your health symptoms much easier, as well as tracking uh, many more health conditions and, and separating the new from the, the long standing. COVID is still here, one in 35 cases. Uh, it's still something to worry about. We're still tracking the pandemic and it looks like it's currently plateaued and might be going up uh, in some parts of the country. Uh, don't worry, we're not going anywhere. We're gonna keep looking at that with you. And your daily symptom reports, absolutely vital uh, for this kind of work, as you can see. And um, I expect that we're gonna be leveling off at about 100,000 cases a day. Um, so do protect yourself and those around you uh, because it's still be very easy if you haven't had it already to get uh, Omicron. These videos are, are going to be coming out every other week now as uh, the team behind them focus on analysis both on COVID and health conditions. Um, so I look forward to seeing you uh, in two weeks' time. And finally, remember, as always, to like and subscribe to our channel, share the app with friends and family, keep an eye on our website and app for updates, and finally, uh, support science and keep logging. Thanks very much.